after 100 stories, you have to form what are called tubes. So, these are tubular structures. Then the hyperbolic shells with uh, as uh, with uh, aluminum uh, composite panels. ACP are called aluminum composite panels. They are not shown here. But you see modern buildings with shiny surfaces, the aluminum composite panels. They are combined with glass to give the appearance for modern uh, high rise buildings. Then special steel. Lot of special steel uh, is being developed. For example, you use uh, special uh, elements from the table like for example, titanium, if you use tungsten, some of these uh, if you use copper, the corrosion rate will come down. So, you alloy it with, uh, with these rare metals, you get special metals and uh, this is actually the high tech architecture. What you see here is made out of titanium, Frank Gehry, then this is Calatravas, then you have FRP, many structures combine for this translucent and transparent panels FRP. What is FRP? Anybody? Fiber reinforced plastics, fiber reinforced plastics. So, we, then you have RC, reinforced cement, RC, it is called RC now, reinforced concrete, glazing, steel, then special steels, fiber reinforced plastic and then smart materials, right, smart materials. Next one, now we go into individual elements and see the picture and we will give a comments, a few comments on each of this one. So, this is the pyramid of Giza at the center here and the it is a marvel, right, it is a marvel and the great question for us civil engineers is how these ancients managed to take up these huge blocks to such heights, right, that is the uh, very uh, what you call the wondrous aspect of the whole pyramid. Next one, this is the Parthenon in the, and this is a computer reconstructed model, the actual one is in not so perfect, there are signs of deterioration because it is very old. So, this is the post and lintel, so the you see the post is the only extends from here to here, right, the columns are so closely spaced because it does not have any arch action, the, it is a bending action and in bending these uh, stones are very poor, right, they have poor tensile strength. Next one, yeah, if the space between the posts is increased, this uh, you know now when I apply a load it only bends a little bit, but if I increase the span for the same load it has to bend, uh, it bends more, when it bends more this is this bottom surface extends more, when it extends more there is more tensile stress and the tensile stress exceeds the tensile strength of the material this will just break, it will just break and fall down. So, there is a critical distance with the ancient found by, by empirical methods, by uh, making mistakes, but today we do not have to do that, we know exactly the tensile strength of the material, we can calculate if it is a stone beam what is the maximum span we can have which will work well and which will not uh, deflect too much, crack and fall down because all the properties are known today, we can calculate, but they did it by intuition at that point in time, is that clear? They will have some thumb rules, if the span is so much the depth should be some, so much, they will have thumb rules which they evolved over a period of time by trial and error by some stone beams failing, at some point they found when they reduce the span it does not break. Is that clear to everybody? Why why the posts are located very close to each other? In later classes the teacher will tell you exactly the formula, right? Sigma you will get a formula like sigma is equal to m by z, you know the sigma you can calculate and find out what exactly is the stress at this uh, at this level and at this level. Now that is not the intention of this class, this class is to give you an overview of that. Yeah, now this is the Roman aqueduct, the Romans were very famous for building aqueducts. What is the aqueduct? A system to transport water. So, many of the aqueducts outside the Roman city, the Rome were below ground. In Rome, they come above ground and here you have a two tier aqueduct 
and this is a fantastic structure the picture does not do justice to the actual structure it is breathtaking when you see it the remnants of this in Rome when you go on a tour of Rome you can see next one this is the height of achievement of renaissance which is called the the gothic cathedral now even here the picture does not give justice to the breathtaking nature of these cathedrals when you really stand in front of them or go inside it is absolutely awe inspiring and the particular characteristic of the cathedral is what is called the, the rose window this, this is called a rose window what is a rose window it is a stained glass with multicolored glass when you go inside and the sunlight comes you get a dazzling view of the picture evolved there by the artist the piece is joined together by lead which is actually a lead uh, which is a stained glass and they have various uh, uh, bell towers and uh, gothic uh, uh, the flying buttresses which are not seen this is a front facade and you can have a talk about a gothic cathedral for entirely a half day uh, outlining all the special features the, the, the scale the proportion the arches you see the entrance is so small but from a distance the entrance looks so big by having successive arches projecting corbelled outside so there are various aspects here but we won't go into the details next one and this is the world famous uh, Florence Cathedral marking the renaissance and Brunacelli Brunacelli is the famous architect from these times who built this dome and the interesting aspect of this dome is from the vertical if you up till about 50 degrees this will be in compression the dome but after 50 degrees it will be in tension as a result when you come to the lower portion of the dome the dome will crack as soon as you construct because those master builders did not know the structural mechanics of the behavior of a dome but today we know that if we exceed 51 degrees go to the lower portion it will be in crack it will crack so we apply what is called cables around it inside and that is called pre-stressing we compress it together as we construct it so it will not crack so these are all uh, evolution over periods of you know over hundreds and hundreds of years slowly we studied the mechanics we understood we saw the deficiency of the what the master builders did and now we know how to overcome that next one this is the Eiffel Tower Gustav Eiffel and this gave a big uh, thrust and a push for design and steel uh, especially in the western world and which followed into the other countries if something is not clear or you have a question or a comment please do stop me yeah.